from our gums, eyeballs, hair, skin, nails, joints, tendons, ligaments, everything. So that's why any sallowness of the skin, any fine lines and wrinkles, any joint pain, that's all due to loss of collagen. Mm -hmm. This is not only replenishing our collagen stores, but it's encouraging our bodies to make collagen again. It's such a game changer. We have seven international and U.S. patents on the product because it is so unique. It is literally changing the game. The um, the biochemist behind the formulation is now the CEO of the company. She was actually just in Forbes as one of the top fastest growing women-led companies in the world. You are listening to the Aligned and Alive podcast with Chrissy May, where we discuss the various aspects of spirituality, and wellness, a place where you can find guidance and a space to explore your life's meaning and purpose, allowing you to become connected, aligned, and feeling fully alive. Today, we have a fabulous guest. She is a Canadian actress best known for her role as Brandy Max in the NBC comedy series, Parks and Recreation. She has guest starred on Netflix's Schitt's Creek and ABC's Blackish, to name a few. She co wrote and co starred in the short film A Play, starring Jane Lynch, which won her Best Actress, Best Writing, and other accolades. She is a fitness enthusiast and momager to her celebrity dog, Coconut, who comes to work out with her on the regs. She also has a passion for helping others and has an e-commerce business focusing on a clinical product line in the anti-aging space with a non-toxic mission. She co-wrote and co-stars in XDs, a sex comedy about exes who are now best friends. She shot two films this summer, The Maganaut Line and Sunlight, as well as Doogie Kamioloha, MD in Hawaii which comes out on Disney this January. Please welcome to the show, the beautiful Mara Marini. Hi. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh. Thank you for being here. It's so nice to finally have you on. And for those that don't know, a quick little trivia. I met Mara on a film set, actually. And I'm not going to name the movie because... (laughs) I don't want that ever out there. It wasn't anything horrible. Like there was no like uh, nudity or anything like no, that, no, no. but it was, yes. it's just one of those, you know, early on experiences <laughs> in, in acting. So we'll leave it at that, but that's how we met. And it was a uh, many, many years ago. So it's so fun to have Mara on. She's just such a fabulous person. So it's, I love sharing beautiful souls. Like that's just one of my favorite things to do. So you're obviously front and center in my mind when I think of great people. For those that don't know who Mara Marini is, I always love to have guests share a snapshot of their story. So your journey, a little peek into your life. Sure. So I'm originally from Canada from Winnipeg, Manitoba. So like frozen tundra, I knew I wanted to be an actress since I was four years old. I told my parents, this is what I'm going to do. And like, my mom is a teacher. My, my dad is a pilot. They're like, I I don't know what to do with you. So I begged them to put me in acting class. They were like, I don't even know what that is. And so I just started memorizing out of my mom's Shakespeare book when I was like five or six. So she's like, fine, I'll try to find something. And she found this like Manitoba theater for young people. And I got involved in that and fell even more in love. And then the rest is history. I'm just like, how do I get to LA? I'm such a Capricorn, like all my yearbook quotes, every, everything was like, how do I get to LA? How do I get to LA? <laughs> Um, And then when I was 17, I went to Toronto, uh, to York University for their theater program and auditioned for the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in LA, which was my ticket out here. And the rest is history. So I've been out here my whole adult life. Amazing. I didn't know that about you. I didn't know that you actually went to school in New York. Is that what you said? Or in I'm sorry, Toronto. Yeah, it's called York, but it's in Toronto. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I always love to pick into people's brains. Like what Uh made you think? I want to become an actress. I want to take on different character roles. I want, I want this to be my life. What was going through your mind? And, and I guess along the years too, because everything changes. Totally. So I, the reason I wanted to do it was I saw a Marilyn Monroe movie when I was like four and I was just like, what's that? What is she doing? Where does she live? I want to do that. So that was like the initial. And my parents were like, okay, LA, I don't know. And then 
from there, I just started be kind of becoming obsessed with it. Like I was such a weird kid. I had this little dish and I would put all like names of all the kids in my class, my teachers, celebrities. And each day I would pick out a name and I would try to copy their mannerisms, like how they held a book, how they talked. Like, I just love trying to like get, become someone else for the day. Mm -hmm. Um, I joke that I invented reality TV before it was a thing because I thought that there were cameras behind every mirror to the point where this is how weird a kid I was. I would wave when I was in bed for like a minute for the credits to roll because I thought cameras were following. I was so weird. But um, I just knew like apparently I didn't know until a little bit later on that my grandma actually wanted to become an actress, but it was during the war and her grandpa was like, absolutely not. You're going to become a teacher at that time becoming an actress was like a floozy kind of thing mm-hmm. like it was not looked upon in a good way and so she never got to follow her dreams and my dad loves flying and so he was really big on like you have to if you really love something we're going to support it as, as much as we don't understand it we'll support you Aww. so that was a big deal too they were really supportive along the way that's huge too support systems everything now do oh, you have yeah. brothers and sisters as well or is it just yeah, you i have a brother he's back in winnipeg he plays the drums he's creative too but he is a, he's two little kids he's a family now so but yeah i'll see them all at christmas so it'll be nice <laughs> so you're the one who just spread her wings and flew to la with yes big dreams and <laughs> and you're crushing them left and right, which is just so fun to see as far as the podcast goes and the YouTube channel. I talk a lot about creating your reality and it, it's just, I love hearing your story because it's the epitome of we can do anything in our lives. I mean, here mm-hmm. you are four or five years old and already going through the visualization exercises of what it feels like to be in those final show credits and seeing your name. So I love hearing that because that's really what it's all about. Right. Yeah, I mean, totally. It doesn't matter. No training or, or you don't have a family history of it. It matters that it's a passion that you feel every cell of your body. Obviously you felt it and now you're living it. So I love yeah, that Thank you for sharing. I, I always encourage people and you've just got to follow it. Like if you don't succeed, what, whatever, it's just following that passion. Like I know when I, like my first big, obviously theater, I loved all of, I love all of it, but my first kind of big credit where like my parents could watch me was really Parks and Rec and Mm -hmm. getting to work with Amy Poehler and these comedy legends, like never before have I felt that level of like, okay, this is what my soul was put on earth to do. It feels so good and so right. And I know I'm so lucky to be here, but this is all I ever wanted. Yeah. Oh, that gave me goosebumps. I get a lot of goosebumps on this. I just, I love hearing that. It just lights me up because anybody can do this. Right. And you, I think that's why it it keeps tugging at our heartstrings until we are in alignment with what we're called to do here. And if we're not buzzing, you know, every day with excitement and joy, then more times than not, we're not in alignment to our soul's calling. That's how I feel. Now I'm not just, I'm not counting out areas of investment opportunities to help capitalize on building your financial portfolio. That's, you have to love that as well. But I mean, the true creative art of what just lights our souls on fire. It really is fun to see it come alive. So obviously, you know, it's not all just rainbows (laughs) and unicorns, you know, so, (laughs) so I would love to hear any challenges or obstacles that you faced along the way, because this is a long journey. You started at such a young age and and you experienced so much. So I'm sure there's a lot, but where were some key obstacles or challenges that you you can recall facing? So many, I think it was really hard for me too. From a very young age, I would be told by acting teachers and coaches like, oh, you're going to work a ton when you're older, you're going to work a ton when you're older. And then Jennifer Coolidge came about like, and the whole Betty White, like I often get like into like a young Betty White, young Jennifer Coolidge and that kind of thing, which I so appreciated, but I'm like, I want to work now, like coming out of the academy and all my friends are booking like the young ingenue on the CW shows and Mm -hmm. I can't like get an agent and I'm just hustling and hustling and trying and writing personalized letters to all these agents every day. And I just couldn't get a break. So when I did get parks, it was kind of, I don't know if you know this story, but it's kind of a back way sort of way that I got it because I couldn't get in front of these big casting directors because I didn't have good representation. And I had all the training behind me. I knew I could do it. I knew I was really good at comedy. And I saw that the casting director for Parks and Rec was holding a workshop. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to get in front of her any other way. So I'm just going to do it on my own. So I went to this workshop and she's like, oh, you're really funny. I was like, thanks. And it happened to be, I had this sweet spot of a couple of years where it's illegal. The guy who 
did this is now getting sued by breakdowns. But essentially, I was able to submit myself as a manager to different projects because I had access like this guy who used to be a manager was letting us pay him monthly and submitting our wow <laughs> so happened to be a couple days later this breakdown comes out for this role and so I submit myself and then I write the casting director I made a fake email address and I write her an email I'm like you met my client at this workshop she'd be perfect for this role blah 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 blah, blah. and she calls me in <sighs> And I booked it, it ended up becoming a recurring guest star, which opened a lot of doors for me. So I always kind of felt like I had to take things in my own hands. Nothing ever like came easily. It was also really hard at the beginning too, is when you don't really know yourself, you're relying, you just want, you just want anything. So it works so badly. Like my first agent, which I'm not even going to name the name. It was so terrible. She said to me, you know, you're not pretty enough to go out for like the hot girl and you don't look quirky enough to go out for the funny girl. So I'm going to need you to chop your hair to here and dye it brown. And I did that. And she did not send me out on one audition. And I just, not that short brown hair is bad. It looks great on some people, but it didn't feel like me. And I didn't listen to my gut. And I was like depressed for like a year (laughs) just because I just didn't feel like me. Just stuff like that. And I mean, obviously any girl that's semi attractive in the industry, you're going to have Weinstein-esque type stories that you've had Mm -hmm. to like bob and weave through to not get stuck in. And luckily I have so many garden angels looking over me that I've been able to bob, duck and weave those. I mean, obviously now, thank God, things are coming to light. Thank God, because social media and everything, there can no longer be like these fam- family dynasties, like the hammers and stuff mm-hmm. that constantly prey on women, but it's still not completely gone. And especially when I was coming up, it was not taught like you you knew about it, but no one was talking about it. So that was hard too, because it always felt like a good old boys club. It was really hard as a woman to sit in front of a man and be taken seriously or either treated like a sex object or a child. I found that really challenging. The business side, I always found a bit challenging. Once I was doing the thing, I was in heaven. It was just like those things behind the scenes that I found hard. This is where I'm supposed to be. So was there ever a moment that you just felt, I, gosh, I'm just going to hang this up. I mean, it, it's just one battle after the next. And like you said, people aren't taking me seriously, or I just look a sex object. Did you ever think of just going back home? I never thought of going back home, but just because Winnipeg never felt like a I never felt like I fit in there, Mm -hmm. Um, but there was a point where I'm just like, am I not good enough? Like, why, why, why? I see all my friends succeeding and I can't seem to get a foot in the door. And that's when I booked parks. And then I was like, okay, this, I'll be doing this till I die. Like there's nothing. (laughs) Um, which is funny that I said Jennifer Coolidge because she actually spoke at my graduation and so did Adam Scott who was on Parks and Recreation so I had my episode with Adam Scott and Parks and Rec I was like you know you spoke at my graduation he's like no way Paul Rudd who's also on our episode spoke at my graduation so it was like a triumvirate (laughs) (laughs) you you mean that's the epitome of creating your own reality right there I, you know, you just took the bulls by the horn and you said, I don't care. I am getting this role. That is it. That is final. Love it. Where there's a will, there is a way. So did, when you did land parks and rec, did you finally upgrade to a better agent? Um, Definitely. It was only supposed to be one episode. Like when they put out the breakdown for that role, it was like all, all ethnicities, all like, and then once I came to set, I had platinum blonde, I was platinum blonde and they kind of, I was actually sitting in the makeup chair and Rob Lowe came up behind me, which by the way. I've never met a more perfect look. He looks like a Ken doll. He's so <laughs> perfectly symmetrical. It's crazy. And he put his hand on my shoulder. He was like, oh my God, I almost kissed you on the head. I thought you were Amy Poehler from behind. And I was like, you could have kissed me on the head. <laughs> but that kind of went on as the recurring joke is that they would dress us similarly and make us kind of look the same. And so that's what kind of got me to be on these. And the, the next episode I did, Amy Poehler actually directed and wrote. So she kind of essentially wrote me back in, which was so nice. Oh, um, how sweet. And then I got to keep coming back. So that was so lovely, but it was just supposed to be a one-off. It was just supposed to be one episode. So. Wow. And then. So did it finally become a contract or were you just, was it still becoming this? Well, write her in this time, maybe not next. Or or did you like, were you constantly wondering, am I going to be in the next episode? Well, I didn't know I was going to be (laughs) back. So I actually dyed my hair chocolate brown and then they called and they're like, we want you back. And I was like, oh, uh," and they're like, you're going to have to go back to platinum. So you can imagine how fried my hair was within like a week's time. I went from platinum to brunette to platinum. It was in there, (laughs) but I'm like, whatever. I want to be back on the show. Oh my gosh. I actually have been there before when I, cause I'm a natural blonde myself and I went dark, dark, dark Brown. And we had in one day to get me back to blonde. I was in there for eight and a half hours and fried all my hair off. Yeah. 
So oh, I, I feel it. I, but see, Hey, whatever works, right. You just got to step up <laughs> and get some dedication right there or get a yeah. wig, you know, either one. I know. I know. I was like, can we get a wig? And they're like, they just weren't, I was just so scared of lo- like, they're being like, Oh, well, it's okay. We'll write you out. Like I was just, ah, I'll just, yeah. die. <laughs> you know, I bet. So- yeah. So then at that point, did they tell you, you know, you have a recurring role this time? No, oh, still- I never knew when I was coming back. Like I was wow. like, my last, this could be my last. And that wasn't until the series finale. They asked me back for the series finale, which was super tight lipped. I only got just my side. They didn't get the whole script for the first time. And Mike Sure, one of the creators took me aside. He's like, we had a long list of people we wanted to bring in for the series finale, but you were towards the top. And I was like, oh my God, what a compliment. Wow. Oh so- my goodness. How so fun. fun. So how long were you on the show for? So gosh, over, I started in season three and then I think they went to season, season seven. No. Yeah. I was, I was in like seven or eight episodes towards the, which popping in throughout the season. And so I could only imagine on a comedy set, what kind of pranks go on or what kind of fun you must have. It's you so ha- there has to be some funny, some funny story you can. Yeah, it, there, <laughs> it's, it's such an interesting thing as an actor coming in as as a guest star or a recurring guest star right because you're you never know what you're walking into and like some shows are a little more like reserved but Park Stark was so fun because everyone was just having the best time from wardrobe writers everyone was so happy to be there and I think in large part to Amy because mm-hmm. the ultra goes down from the top you know right. she made it like she's such a generous actor when the camera's on me she could have pieced out and gone and done other things she stayed there and acted with me she I it was so fun during lunch hours in the makeup trailer, she would have dance parties to get ready for the <laughs> afternoon. So it was like the whole cast dancing, getting jazzed up for the afternoon. It was just a really fun and you don't get that on every show by any means. So it was a really fun experience. I could only imagine. I mean, and just to have that energy to feed off of all yeah. the time, how fun to wake up and experience oh, that on a daily funny. basis. That's, yes. <laughs> and just like the most hilarious writing, just amazing, like legends of a cast, like so much fun. Oh my gosh. What a great experience. I yeah. mean, yeah. And how are you going to top that? Right. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll be able to, I have no <laughs> doubt in my mind. You will. That's amazing. And so currently right now you've been so busy throughout the summer. I mean, just yeah, so been- much going on. So do you want to talk a little bit about your projects? Do you, do you yeah. want to give a little peek on sure. what, what you have coming out? So the Magino line is a film that it's really funny. The the writer is my first project up out of school here in LA was a play. And it was this writer named Emmett Laverty. Long story short, it was called Beauty, Brains and Personality. I was the personality. <laughs> he reached out to me. I had not seen him since I was like, I don't know, 19, 20. And he's like, I wrote this film. I really want you to be the lead in it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this sounds amazing. So <laughs> sort of, I, and I couldn't believe he, re- I mean, I hadn't seen him in so long. So that was a really fun experience because it was the first time I was really the lead in a feature and how much work that took Mm. and time. And then the second project was someone I'd worked with before, uh, Mark David, who's really awesome. And that shot in Detroit. It's called Sunlight. It's a really cool, it's a bit darker. It's not a comedy, but it's about a guy who, you know, can't really tell reality from the dream world. Mm. And I don't want to give too much away, but um, I got to work with some really cool people. It was really fun. And then Doogie Kamealoha MD was so fun because I got to work in Hawaii and I love (laughs) Hawaii so much. I grew up going to the grandma lived there. So it was like just the best of both worlds. Getting to be on the island, getting to work. And that was a really fun cast and crew too. So I was in Maui when you were on. Yeah, we just missed each other. I was in Oahu and you were in Maui. I was like, oh, darn it. I was waving at the beach. (laughs) Sending you some love. It is. Isn't it so magical? Like oh. I can't think of a better place on earth than the islands. Like, oh my gosh. I love it so much. It just like resets me, makes yes. me calm, makes me so happy. When I'm in like really bad LA traffic, I'll just put on some Hawaiian music. Mm. And take me somewhere else. <laughs> I've meditated to that or danced in my house to that before. Like it just <laughs> can like, it didn't put, puts me back in the environment, everything about it. Oh my gosh. Oh. So now do you get to go back again? Or is that, was that just a one and done? That's it. It's not a series was it a film so no it is a series um, okay and they've already shot that season but there is room in a world like Mm. maybe we could come back next season which would be so awesome but we'll love it if you ever need any moral support just let me know I'll I'll, I'll come along so now that you've been able to 
kind of finally like come into your own. I mean, it kind of feels like you have this rhythm now, you know, you're finally in the, in like you are, you've done it. You are a full fledged accomplished actress and still thriving and succeeding. What do you do throughout the day? I mean, I know you're heavy into fitness and health yeah. and wellness and all that. Give us a little peek into what keeps you charged, what keeps you centered and going and, you know, sharpening your skills that you, you, you need to rely on to keep growing. Yeah. Great question. So as an actor, you never know what your day is going to be like. And people are like, what's your week? Like, I'm like, well, this is what I've structured it as, but that could all change tomorrow. You know, I'm actually on hold for an exciting project right now in Toronto that I could have to pack my bags tomorrow and leave. So you're just always kind of, you know, you never know what the next day is going to bring. Um, I am such a Capricorn. I like structure. So I have my week filled out with my writing sessions and um, often, you know, if I, if my friends are self taping me, I'm self taping my friends as well. So like coaching them and, you know, vice versa. So that's a lot of like interspersed throughout the week too. Cause you'll get an audition in the morning and you're like, crap, my, I've got to rearrange my whole day. Mm -hmm. so, so there's that. Um, and then um, I've also been working with this. Sorry, I just have a bit of the sniffles because I'm just getting over this cold. So. I know. Bless your heart um, for still showing up. She no, is. She's, absolutely. She's, I know. She's a little, um, <laughs> little under the weather. Hi. I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, between writing sessions and auditions and working out, um, I definitely keep pretty busy. I also um, partnered with this clinical company that's been really exciting just because um, again, in the health and fitness world, I've always been really, really into that from a young age. And so mm -hmm. this has been something that I kind of came into towards the beginning of the pandemic Pandemic, and have been so thankful for because it's been such a wonderful, um, unexpected like value and impact. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's pretty much... And then socially, of course, I'm constantly go. If I'm not in a play or something myself, I'm going to go support friends in plays and comedy shows and all sorts of stuff. And always yeah. on the go, always. always on the go, <laughs> except when I have a cold. But mostly, so then what do you what do you do to regroup? What do you do to to reset? I mean, you have don't you feel like you have to reset at some point, or do or can you just go 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 and you're good that way? Um, I can go 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 quite a bit, mm -hmm. but definitely need like a minute to like recharge with my little coconut and like you know be home for a second too. Like it'll be like one weekend of craziness and next weekend like kind of down, you know, a little more chill. Right? How is coconut? Can we see her? Can we get can her? You, her. Stay here. Stay here. Coconut. Come here, babies. Come here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's mad that I moved her. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Two pounds. She, she like, I'm so sorry, Coconut. I, I just wanted to have everybody meet you because you're so... <laughs> Coconut doesn't like me. <laughs> she loves you. She's just like, was in a very comfortable spot. Oh, no, I'm was, so sorry. To no. She's such a diva. Oh uh -huh. my gosh. Too funny. Well, hi coconut. I mean, you have the most amazing momager. So, you know, we had to see you see how you're doing. Coconut has an Instagram, doesn't she? Oh yeah. Teacup coconut. She has like, I think 76 or something thousand followers. I think I got a friend request from a teacup, teacup coconut. It's probably <laughs> <here>. <laughs> Sorry, coconut. I'm going to have to answer that one. Uh, oh, okay, coconut. I don't know what she hears. All right. So along those lines, let's talk collagen. Yes. Let's talk anti-aging because this is one of my favorite subjects to talk about everywhere I go. A lot of women are like, what do you do for your skin and all that? Mm -hmm. So it's fun to be able to help people along the way. So let's, let's talk Mara and I actually are business partners and, um, we are a part of a company, this clinical collagen that is just fabulous. And I understand everybody's body's different. So I don't want to push anything, but I do want to have a conversation about it. It's, it's changed my life since I've been taking these products since last October. I've been taking supplements since I was 16 years old. Oh. I was raised by a mom who is heavy into holistic healthcare. And so I've always been into like herbs and, and how to cure situations and not mask it. So yeah, this is right up my alley and I've tested everything. Yeah. I've seen it all. So let's talk, let's talk collagen. I have had joint pain since I was a kid. My parents took me to doctors back in Canada for it. No one really knew quite what to do with me because I was really young and having joint pain, which is a little 
rare. Um, and so doctors, they would just kind of be like, you know what, take a collagen, take glucosamine, but you'll probably get arthritis when you're older. I'm like, awesome. Thanks. Yeah. So I've been on powdered collagen my entire life, like from a very young age, but I still had joint pain and I'm like, maybe my nails are slightly stronger, but I can't tell that this is really doing anything. Mm -hmm. And it was right at the beginning of the pandemic. My girlfriend, um, she's kind of big in the soap opera world. Her name's Mackenzie Westmore. And she reached out to me because I was very vocal on, you know, about having joint pain. And she's mm -hmm. like, you've got to try this collagen. And I was like, Mackenzie, I've tried every call. How is this going to be any different? She's like, you don't understand. This is the only one in the world that's medical grade. It's clinically proven mm -hmm. and you can actually absorb it. Your body absorbs all the product. And I'm like, what do you mean? Am I not absorbing all the other stuff? She's like, no, you're not. So within three weeks of taking this liquid collagen, my joint pain completely went away. And for me, that's unheard of because it'll go away for a few days, mm -hmm. but it comes back. It has knock on wood, not come back. And that was the first big, whoa, like that alone, I'm going to take this forever. Right. But then I start noticing my workout recovery is so much better. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling better all around. Like and then in the second month, I started noticing all the aesthetic stuff. People started asking coconut, what are you using on your skin? And no one's really asked me that before. I've always had like fine skin, but no, all of a sudden, a lot of people are asking, what are you using on your skin? Um, my hair, like, remember the platinum chocolate yes, platinum uh -huh. thing? It was fried after that. Like, it just would not grow past a certain point. Now it's like the longest it's ever been, mm. continuing to grow. My lashes are the longest they've ever been. I have all the nail technicians at the salon. These are my real nails on it because they've seen the glow up of my nails. Um, and all that to say, this made me dive into the science behind it. I'm like, I've been on collagen my whole life. Why is this one so different? Mm -hmm. I noticed nothing with the other one. And this one, I'm noticing stuff within less than a month. That's crazy, right. you know? So I came to learn collagen, first of all, is an $8 billion industry. It's projected to be $16 billion in the next few years here. Mm -hmm. Everyone's buying one. They're buying it from Amazon, Walmart, Costco. The problem is the A, the FDA doesn't regulate supplements, unfortunately, mm -hmm. as you know, they just don't. Right. So it's often ground up cow hooves and pig hide and who knows what other filler they're putting in there. But on top of that, the molecules are just too large for us to absorb. So if you picture like a chain link fence, it's like trying to throw a baseball through it. Like it's just not going to get through. And you're actually only absorbing on average of 18% mm -hmm. of our product, which is like nothing. The biochemist behind this liquid collagen formulation found the exact molecular size and weight of our own collagen molecules. So it mimics what we make naturally. And not only that, we're able to absorb it at 98%. It's encouraging our bodies to start making collagen again, which is huge. Like mm -hmm. right around our early 20s, it's a steep decline of collagen production, but we still use it for absolutely everything from our gums, eyeballs, hair, skin, nails, joints, tendons, ligaments everything. So that's why any sallowness of the skin, any fine lines and wrinkles, any joint pain, that's all due to loss of collagen. Mm -hmm. This is not only replenishing our collagen stores, but it's encouraging our bodies to make collagen again. It's such a game changer. We have seven international and US patents on the product because it is so unique. It is literally changing the game. The um, the biochemist behind the formulation is now the CEO of the company. She was actually just in Forbes is one of the top fastest growing women led companies in the world. Mm -hmm. And she's just phenomenal. Asma Ishak. She's just incredible. Mm -hmm. She's actually on the board of directors for collagen globally. And she's trying to work with the FDA to get collagen regulated because the moment that happens, every other collagen is off the market. Right. We not only meet FDA requirements, but we exceed them. Mm -hmm. We're actually this new exciting category because we're not just a supplement because we are medical grade and clinically proven, but we're not a pharmaceutical because we're not, you know, Pres prescription based. So we're this new category called super nutraceutical. And it's just a really exciting time. Like, not only has it been incredible for me just taking the product, but then as I started working with them, it's been, it's been so rewarding, like just a for my financial portfolio, but also the impact and value it's bringing to people, the messages I receive, mm -hmm. people crying, like I've been on painkillers for my joint pain the last like five years. And in less than two weeks, I'm noticing a difference. I don't have to take painkillers anymore. Or like nothing's ever changed my skin before. I've been on acne medication my whole life. This is the first time in my adult life I've walked out of my house without makeup. Like these testimonials, like it just feels so good that you're helping mm -hmm. people too. 
And we're working with so many doctors and surgeons that are pairing this with patients pre and post surgery. Um, a lot of med spas are now coming on board when they're seeing the clinical trials. Like it's really, really exciting. And it's something I'm so passionate about because it's done so much for me too. Mm-hmm. And, and I was doing stuff for my friends and customers. So it's been really, really wonderful. And the moment I came on board, I'm like, I've got to tell Chrissy because I know how big you are into health and wellness. I'm like, this is so up your alley. And, you know, we've been working together now for, gosh, it's been like a, almost a couple of years now, a year and a half at least. A year and a half. Yeah. yeah. I can't, it's flown by. Thank you for also the educational part of it because not everybody delivers it the way you did. You did a <laughs> beautiful job in explaining it. It really, in my opinion, feels like a miracle you know, supplement. It it does because I've tried everything and you're right about the absorption. Most of the products, the powders and other pills and stuff that are out there are garbage. And I say that because I personally have tried them myself and they don't do anything. Mm -hmm. And so when I was presented with this, also, I do my own research, looking at any product before I put it in my body, I've had a 20 year battle with inflammation in my right knee. So my, my leg workouts have been severely limited over the last two decades because of the knee pain I've, I've experienced after post-surgery just never healed the right way. So I personally can attest to this. I mean, I've tried everything on the market, every natural supplement, same thing that, that you said, doctors and and holistic practitioners told me to, you know, use this, use that none of it worked. And I followed my protocols to a T because to be pain-free is the most beautiful feeling in the entire world. And so when this was presented to me, and I started taking it, it was the same thing about the third week, fourth weekend. I remember going to the gym thinking, what the heck I'm doing step ups. And I don't feel the pain and discomfort that I was feeling before. And then any other pains or ailments I was feeling in my body gone, all of it. And then it was the second or third month, the same thing that I, well, it was like the six week mark when my skin, I already have decent, you know, pretty good skin, but it was glowing. Like I had a film of like dewy, um, almost like a primer on that. It was like, I bought, but it was nothing. I had no makeup on nothing. And I remember people saying, what the heck are you doing to your skin? It was the third month when I saw massive results with my hair. I've been wearing hair extensions for the last five years because the same thing that Mara said, the same thing happened to me was I fried my hair from, cause I'm na- a natural blonde, but I was a platinum blonde for many years and my hair would not grow anymore. It got down to about here and that was it. And it had fried oh, ends really? and it, yeah. Oh, it was gross too. Yeah. I mean, I had like a little rat ponytail that would stick out. It was just not attractive. So I was. I, you know, I was addicted to the tape ends because they're yeah. healthier for your hair right? and you can still get that full body. My hairdressers now, they are even like, what the heck is going on? I posted a video in my Instagram story a couple months ago and I had people that said, like even people that have done my hair over the years and said, there's no way I said, there's zero hair extensions in my hair right now. So I am a huge advocate for it. I love it. I will never go without it. But with that being said, you know, some questions do always come up with certain people. And, you know, one I get often is, well, I have to take this the rest of my life in order to achieve the results I'm seeing. Here's the thing. Unfortunately, like anything that says plant-based collagen or any of that stuff is, is essentially a lie because plants don't make collagen and you cannot get collagen, the way this collagen is absorbed in the body from food. It's the one, if you're going to take one supplement for the rest of your life, there's so much you can get from food like diet, Mm -hmm. but this is one you're not going to be able to get from diet. So essentially, yes, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I do think that, um, the company is really incredible with loyalty rewards and all kinds of stuff that it does make it cheaper for you. But I always say, you know what, if you, how do I word this in a nice way? I would rather you like just save your money and don't buy the other stuff on the market because you're literally throwing your money away. Mm -hmm. You're literally not absorbing that product. At least with this, you're maybe spending a little bit more, but actually when you equate it, it's not really um, because we have again, like those loyalty rewards and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and just that. Um, and you're absorbing 98% of that product. So that those 30, 60, 90 day results. That's why they're so impressive because you're absorbing all of it. Like I know we have these little travel uh, travel collagen. And there was one trip I went on where I, I thought I packed them and I didn't. 
I noticed a big difference coming yeah. home. I'm like, oh my God, my joints feel achy again. No, 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 no. Please say it's not bad. <laughs> as soon as I got back on it, it was, it was gone. And I was so thankful, but I'm like, we need this. Unfortunately, we were after the age of about 20, our body's not making it like it used to. So if you right. want to keep, I mean, for me, I'd rather forego a manicure or a facial or something like that and and, and spend my money on this because mm-hmm. it really, you glow from the inside when you take this. So oh, if I yeah. have to cut corners here and there, I'll cut them in other places. I'm not going to cut it here because of all the things it's, I've, I've never had any other supplement do even close to what the supplement has done for me. Oh, absolutely. Not to mention, I always tell people this, like think of the larger cost that is going to happen in your life. If you don't start doing something now to take care of the inflammation in your body and everything else that's going on, Mm -hmm. I mean, down the road now, there's possibilities of surgeries and other things. Mm -hmm. Like this is to me, this is maintenance. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's also like, it's just, it's just done so much internally and externally for me that I'm just like, I can't imagine going without it. Oh, it's like, it's like oil for your car. Your car can't run without premium oil, right? Especially depending on what kind of car you drive. The other thing that used to come up for me a lot when I would talk to clients about supplementation, you know, it's just like you said, not all supplements are created equal because there are no standards. There are no measurements, right? So you have to really do your research on what companies you're aligning yourself with. And of course, what's good for your own body. That's really important. Mm -hmm. Also everyone's collagen stores are Mm -hmm. different too, right? So some people, the quickest I've heard of anyone, anyone noticing something, someone messaged me within three days that she noticed her joint pain had gone away completely, which I've never heard of anything going that quick. (laughs) And then we always like to say 30, 60, 90, because everyone's, you're starting at where your collagen stores are. Like, so your collagen stores need to be replenished before you're going to start noticing effects, right? Right, so right. Everyone is starting from a different place. I haven't heard of anyone personally that hasn't noticed something, whether it's internal or external, mm-hmm. by at least that two month mark. But the company always likes to say 90 days because that's what they did their clinical trials on. But yeah. Right. And that's where I saw all those benefits come in. 90 days yes. was the big one for me. Yes. That was huge. And that's still a really fast amount of time. Like I think I was doing hair pills back in the day. And I think around (laughs) seven months, I sort of noticed a difference. So to notice something within 90 days is pretty fast. Oh my gosh. Three months. Yeah. 90 days. That's nothing. Well, I pre-packed a bottle to Maui. I actually unopened, you know, an unopened bottle. I made sure I had it with me, but I did travel to see my family and I forgot it. And that week I was gone. I absolutely saw a difference in how my, and my joints and how I felt. It's crazy. It was really interesting. Yeah. So I'm like, I've, okay, well, it's definitely not snake oil. <laughs> this stuff no. definitely works. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lifetime user for sure. I mean, yeah. I'm, I definitely am a believer because I feel it on my inside. I feel better and yes. yeah. And everything else, it just comes from the inside out. It just glows. It does yeah. in the description below. We're going to have links for all the information on this. If you want more information on how to even align yourself with Mara and I, you know, we're, We are having a a very small select team of people we're picking. So we're going to have uh, an application process, but uh, like I said, it's going to be a very select few people that we are looking to align ourselves with and whatever you do in life, it's really important to have that mindset. So then you can find out who you really are going to resonate with having strategic partnerships that are really important. So you can just grow together. And that's the whole point of this is to grow together and make a difference. I'm all about making a difference in the world. If I can give back and help someone heal from, you know, former traumas or pain or overcoming any obstacles they may want to. That's what we're here to do. We're here to serve each other. We're here to grow with each other. I love that. And then, yeah, the link that you'll be posting will also give, um, your listeners a discount when they, if they do choose to try. Yes. As well. Thank you for mentioning that. That's right. See how if I didn't have Mara, <laughs> I would have no clue just for you guys who are watching this right now, who want to take advantage of this opportunity and to start feeling better. It will be in the description box below. So then what's next? Like what, where are you now? Where in the world is Mara Marini? Let's put, put it like that. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, I, you know, things have been going pretty great on the acting front, the writing front, as well as all the collagen and, um, you know, in in that world as well. So it's been really lovely. Um, I'm on hold again for a project that could be really big for me, knock on wood in Toronto, which I hopefully we'll find out any day now. 
Um, but aside from that, you know, just continuing to audition, um, I'm writing some really exciting stuff. Um, one is with this incredible showrunner, um, some more stuff with Sean, who you know, who oh, I wrote yeah. with. We're actually going to um, award ceremony because we won a bunch of awards for a play. Um, so they're inviting us to that. And then we actually wrote a couple more short films that we're hoping to gear up here and shoot in the next, you know, three to six months-ish. Sean Wing and Paul Witten, um, mm -hmm. they're really wonderful too. And... Yeah, just continuing. I mean, my ultimate dream is to have my own sitcom. That's what oh, I want at some point. So hopefully one day that will occur. But in the meantime, um, just continuing to work on awesome projects with awesome people that light me up. And, um, you know, I'm so lucky to be in sunny LA with my little coconut, getting to pursue what my dreams. So I really can't complain. It's been an adventure. And I'm sure there'll be lots more Hawaii, you know, jaunts you're welcome to come to one. <laughs> oh, i definitely will be well i'm hosting one of my wellness retreats is going to be in maui next Ooh, april right. may mm -hmm. oh my god that sounds amazing i'll be giving yeah. you details <gasps> on all of it oh my love gosh it, you should see it. the place i found too it's oh, it oh is gosh. literally a dream it feels like a fantasy it's so beautiful but yeah, I'll definitely give you more info Love on that, that. to yes, spread the, please. to spread the word, yes. you know, intimate eight to 10 ladies. That's it. Oh, Just, that's so oh, beautiful. so much goodness. I oh love God, it. I love you. Do you feel that somebody for all of the fellow actors that are watching or listening to this, do you feel that, that anybody can step into a new chapter in their life? Say they're 40 years old and they say, guess what? I have always wanted to be an actress. I've always wanted, I love acting. I want to get more involved and go get more training. Do you think it is possible? Or do you feel like many years ago, if you didn't make it by the time of X, Y, and Z, there was really no chance. I think you should always pursue your dreams. I don't mm -hmm. care what it is. I know with athletics and stuff, obviously, unfortunately there's a shelf life. I always, my heart breaks for, cause I can't imagine if you told me, okay, at this age, you can no longer act. I would be devastated. And that's what happens for, you know, athletes, dancers, mm -hmm. who I can also consider athletes, but you know what I mean? That kind of thing. So I think if you can just go for it, like, I, I think one of the worst things would be, you know, being on your deathbed one day and being like, I wish I tried, yes. you know, regardless of where it goes, maybe it doesn't evolve into exactly what you want, but it might take you on this whole other cool path that mm -hmm. you didn't even know about. You know, it's the same thing. I kind of joke with dating, right? Like I always go on the date because I like, I really enjoy people. I like meeting new people. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that's going to be my Prince Charming, but maybe I'll end up setting him up with my friend. Maybe I'll end up marrying his brother. Maybe we'll end up doing a cool work collaboration together. And I find it's the same thing with like following your heart, following your gut. Like it may just take you on this other path you're meant to go on. So I'm a big believer in just like, go for it. Oh, such great words. I love it. Yes. Didn't you? And fun fact, didn't you work for Patty, uh, the millionaire yes. matchmaker? Yes. Oh. A thousand moons ago. I saw some video you talking about working with her and oh. I'm like, oh my gosh, Mara was, I didn't know Mara was a matchmaker or helped assist matchmakers. Yeah. That's why yeah. you're so great with dating advice and everything <laughs> else. So with that being said, are you still single? Or are you dating? Or are you... I'm so, uh, I, I, here's the thing. Again, I love meeting new people. So for me, I always joke if any other woman had one one hundred of my stories, they would have joined a convent like <laughs> a thousand years ago. So for me, it's just like, I'm writing a book because it, some of these stories you won't even believe are real. Like it's just absolutely insane. But at the same time, I love, like, it's been an adventure, right? So um, I'm seeing someone, it's early days. I've been disappointed so many times, so I don't like to say too much, but knock on wood, maybe this time it'll work. <laughs> but it's really lovely. But it's just, it's hard because it's like, I joke that people say LA is the hardest place in the world to date. And I'm like, no, it's not. You can go on eight dates a day if you want to. <laughs> What's hard is if you're looking for something more, both people wanting to invest in one another, right? Because there is this sense of bigger bettering it out here. I'm sure, I'm mm. sure it's any big city, but mm -hmm. especially out here. Cause it's like, I can go out with you tonight, but the hot blonde I'm going out with tomorrow night might be perfect. Oh, she's not perfect. <sighs> okay, the hot blonde tomorrow night might be perfect. And it's just constantly chasing that. Plus some people try to navigate 
getting up in their career with dating, which is another mm. whole challenging layer. Cause I'm like, I just want to meet my person. Like I don't need to meet someone that's going to elevate my career and be my person, you know? Right. So it's, it's a challenge. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> totally different world. I never thought of that. You're right. Because somebody wants, do you think there's actors and actresses out there that just come together for a media plug to help spice up their careers, but they're really not into each other, but they act like they're into each other. um, I'll tell you, I can't name names. (laughs) Tell you after the show. But when I first came to LA, I only knew this one actor because I'd met him in Toronto. And so when I knew I was coming to LA, I was like, Hey, I'm moving to LA. He's like, Oh, cool. We'll have to hang out. And he was so nice to me. So good to me. He was quite a bit older than me. We would go through magazines and he's like, my agent says I have to date someone because like they're, they're questioning my sexuality. But I mean, I knew he was straight, but at the time, at that time, people were very like weird about it. And he's like, so just have to find someone to date. So we'd look through these celebrities and they would set him up on dates just to look like he's dating, but he wasn't really. So a hundred percent that happens. (laughs) I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Oh Oh, my gosh. I kind of had a feeling. Well, plus it's like, how, well, how do you even know what's real? Because everyone is trained in acting. So how do you even know if it's a real deal situation or if it's just playing the part? Mm-hmm. That would be hard. That is me. why I don't want to date an actor. <laughs> I mean, there's many reasons I don't want to date an actor, bless their hearts. But I think it's really hard when two people do the same thing. And mm. there's such high highs and such low lows. And I do find, and this is not to rag on guys, but I've just seen it so many times that if you know the girl starts to do a little bit better, the guy feels demasculated and he cheats or mm. the guy starts to do better. Now you have Giselle Bunchin type women throwing themselves at you because you're famous. It's hard for him to stay faithful. And I just, and I'm not saying all guys cheat, but <laughs> I think it's really hard. So for me, I'm just like, I'd rather not date talent if I can. Cause yes. the same reason, you know, I don't think I'm the typical actress guys are like, Oh, I don't want to date an actress. And I understand that, but there are stereotypes for a reason. It's in the sense of like, I've seen it, you know, I get it. Like there's very few Chris Pratt, Nick Offerman type, you know, actors in the world that are just kind of like, you know, really secure in themselves and just doing right. It's or unless, lot. or unless you're like Matthew McConaughey and decide to pick up your whole family, move to Texas where you're from, you know, yeah. I mean, but yeah, you, you control the, the narrative you can go and say, guess what? I live, you know, on the East coast now, or I live over here in the Midwest. Just, well, yes. And for the first time ever, because of the pandemic, I have friends that work more than me that have pieced out of LA. They're going to mm-hmm. Nashville or, you know, they're going to Texas, Austin and whatever, because they're like, it's cheaper for me to fly in for callbacks than live in LA. And that's the first time because, you know, everything is self-taped now, everything. Mm-hmm. So I would always be scared to travel because I'm like, oh my God, I can't miss an audition. I can't miss an audition. Well, everything is self-taped. So you can self-tape from anywhere. So there's pros and cons to that, but you know. You don't have to live in LA now you're saying. You can actually live. Okay. No. So it it is a, it's an interesting thing because it's never been like that before. You've always kind of had to be, I still think it behooves you to live in LA because there's still opportunities and meetings and things happen really fast. But I think there now more than ever, there's an opportunity to not live here and still possible before. It almost seems to me that it would be easier to break in the business now because with social media, the way it is, you can put up a video on YouTube. I mean, look at what happened with Justin Bieber, you know, many, many, many years ago. And so, so do you think it really, if someone's trying to get started in acting, do you think it's necessary for them to pick up and move to LA and start their whole life anew? Or do you think it's, it's one of those things where they can start creating a YouTube channel Instagram account and start pouring their talent onto the platform and hopefully start positioning themselves to be seen in front of certain people. Yeah. I mean, definitely that is an avenue. I always Mm -hmm. say you kind of just have to attack the industry from whatever way you can, right. Mm -hmm. Whether that's writing, creating, whatever you can do. So if it's moving to LA and in taking meetings and kind of trying to meet people to create and go that way, whether it's, you know, putting all your stuff on socials and and trying to create a following, showing off your talent, whether it's both or all of the above, you know, whatever way you can kind of infiltrate, um, taking classes, meeting those people in the classes, Mm -hmm. um, creating stuff with those people in the classes, like all of that stuff helps. You never know as an actor where your next job is going to come from. Like if I told you each thing, like both of the films I booked this summer were from things, I didn't audition for them because they're from things I'd done years and years and years before that they remembered me. Like 
you just never know. So it always behooves you to just say yes and, and try mm-hmm. this other thing or take this improv class or whatever it is. Be front and center and yeah. constantly showing up and being in, well, it's like anything, right? You have to be sharpening your craft all the time, yes. whatever that is. If you're a writer, write every day. Uh-huh. Yeah. If you're an actor, act every day. It's easy to come out here and, you know, get a, a job doing whatever, and then kind of wait. And like, I'm waiting for my agent, you know, but oh, right. kind of, well, your agent may never call. Like you have yeah. to shit happen for yourself. You, if you, did you come out here to just be famous or did you come out here? Cause you want to act, you mm-hmm. want to act, go take a class, go start creating something, do something, you know, exactly. So I think it's easy to kind of get stuck in this. Well, I'll just, you know, see what I get offered. I'm like, you haven't shown anything yet. You don't have any, you're not going to have any offers. <laughs> be proactive. Yeah. Whatever it is you decide to do, go after it. Go after yeah. it with passion and purpose and conviction. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So what would be your favorite line from Parks and Rec? If you could leave us with one favorite line that stands out that was funny. Well. That maybe you had a hard time. <laughs> really giving it because you kept laughing. I mean, is there, is there any line that you, <laughs> and anything goes so, by the way, you can say whatever. They have such great writing on that show. And it would have to be, probably this is the most iconic for my character was my first episode. It's called Jerry's Painting in season three. And oh, Amy Fuller's character is uh, on the herd with Purd, with Purd Happily. He's like the Pawnee, the city, um, you know, news host, anchor man. And it's a debate of art versus pornography. And, you know, he's asking Amy Poehler's character, Leslie Nope, like, what do you consider pornography? She's like, I believe it was, you know, she's going on. And there's this, this pornographic piece of art behind, you know, in behind. And then perturbs to me and he goes, well, how do you define pornography? And I say, for me, it's when the penis goes in. <laughs> and then they just hold it for just a beat, extra beat long. And that was... <laughs> That gets cited a lot, um, but it was just so much fun. Like just the writers are so good. And the great thing about that show too is you do it as written a bunch of times and then you get to do fun runs. So oh, writers cool. will throw stuff out at you. You get to improv and you never know what's going to make it in the episode, which is so much fun because you don't get that on every show by any means. So it was a really fun experience. That is so fun. So it's like every actor has creative yeah. input in their whole, the whole process. How yeah. it's almost like y'all, you're all becoming co-writers of the show to a certain degree. That's <laughs> really writing's cool. so good though. So that we, they rarely use what we said, yeah, but right. I mean, because the writing's just so on point on that show, but we did, there are some things that made it in. So it was very fun. All right. We're going to end with Mara under a minute, and I'm just going to throw out several questions. Love it. You have to answer them as quick as possible. I'm going to set my timer. I love a game. I love a game. Okay. Favorite color? Pink. Mercedes or BMW? Mercedes. Uh, Pizza or tacos? Tacos. Tuxedo or scruffy? Tuxedo. I'm a Capricorn. Success. Blonde or brunette? Oh, blonde for me, but brunette for a guy. I don't know. I like them all. Beach or forest? Beach. First class or private? Private. Hello. Who who would not choose private? (laughs) You never know. Backyard barbecue or fine dining restaurant? Fine dining. Turkey or ham? Oh, neither excite me, but I guess turkey. (laughs) Would you rather play like Marilyn Monroe or Xena the Ex-Warrior? Oh, that's so hard because I think Anna DeArmas did such a great job as Marilyn that, and, and I'm so hard on people that play Marilyn and I thought she just did such an amazing job that I don't think I could play that right after her, even though it's always been a dream to play Marilyn. And, but I do think Xena, Princess Warrior would be really fun. Mm-hmm. I think so too. That'd be a real adventure. Champagne or cocktails? I would love to drink champagne because that's all Marilyn Monroe had in her fridge. I've always wanted to be a champagne lover, but one sip and I have an instant headache. So really? I have a cocktail. No and Prosecco, so no bad. champagne? I can sometimes have a little bit of Prosecco, but it's like, it has to be a minute amount. It's very depressing. Sugars with the bubbles. I don't know. Could be. Yeah. It's so sad though. I want, like, I, I love it, but I just can't have it. Oh, uh, well, it's actually a blessing when you think about it, when you can't have certain things, you're like, well, Cause it would just age me. 
And <laughs> I don't drink alcohol very often. Like all my friends yeah. joke that like, I'll be the girl with like club soda and mint and lime making it look like a cocktail. Cause I don't, I've not that I'm against it at all. I've just never needed to drink to have fun. Like I feel mm. like I'm, I can have fun sober. No, not to say I won't have a drink, but I just don't feel like I have to. I never feel like I have to. So yeah. I think that's, I think that's great. It's so true. Like when I go on my dry runs and I don't have any alcohol, I have crazy energy. Yeah. Like I'm already high energy as it is, but I have like insane energy. So I'm so crystal clear and I have nothing in my system and people think I'm on something because I'm so wired. Right. Yeah. I'm like, no, this is just me. It's like, <laughs> it's just life. I can feel the life force moving through me. So yes, I, I agree. There's death. Well, alcohol is depressant anyway. Right. I so. know people would joke like back in the day when we go out till really, really, really late, they'll be like, what are you on? And I'd just be like life. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I was the trooper that like never partake in any of the, the stuff. So that's so great though. <laughs> Cause you're truly living it. I love yeah. that. You don't need no 75 hard challenge or anything like that. You got it. You're just <laughs> living it and breathing it. So. Thank you. So what's your, are you reading anything right now? Any good reads that you're immersed in? Yes. Oh, so, I could have asked you that fiction or nonfiction. Um, nonfiction mostly, mm -hmm. although I will occasionally pick up a good fiction. It sort of depends. I read a lot. Um, I'm obsessed with, you know, the differences between the male and the female brain. So I read this one great mm -hmm. book is called the sex differences between, between the male and the female brain. And I learned so much, like, it's amazing. We can have conversations, let alone relationships. Like our brains are really different. It's super what's fascinating. What's the one takeaway. If you could think of one that really <gasps> stood out, that was like almost so mind blowing takeaways. Um, one of them was really fascinating about birth control. So you know why you're attracted to someone's pheromones, right? Do you know this? It's no. Because... Why do you no, Why? Why are, yeah. Cause there's that instant chemistry that draws mm. you to certain people, right? If you're attracted to the way someone smells like their pheromones, mm. it's often because like in caveman days, that would mean like you have opposing immune system. So you'd make the healthiest baby. And that's, we're still attracted to that. Right. But the difference is when a woman takes birth control, now the pheromones she emits and the pheromones she's attracted to change quite a bit. And so a lot of people cite once they get married and the woman goes off birth control because they want to try to have a baby, some of that attraction isn't there. And it's like, would they have been attracted to one another if she wasn't on birth control? Mm. So that kind of stuff was really interesting. It also talked about the reason women are more mature is the whole time in the womb the woman's brain is being worked on that whole time. They're working on the guy's penis, like almost, almost that full, like so much of that time. So women come out a little more mature. It's just very interesting. The whole book so, is very fascinating. Let me get this clear the time that the men are being grown in the womb. You're saying yeah. that majority of that time is on the penis. A lot of that time, a lot of that what? time would have been spent that is spent for the woman with her brain is spent with a guy for his penis. <laughs> it's really interesting. But, but uh, on that topic of books, like the power of now by Eckhart Tolle, mm. I really loved, um, it's a good one. And then as far as fiction, like I really loved all of Brett Easton Ellis's books. Um, I also loved, um, all of, a lot of Alex Garland who wrote the beach and the Tesseract, um, Right now I'm reading The Seven Husbands of El Evelyn Hugo, um, which got amazing reviews. And so that's a fiction one that I'm reading, but I'll often read like spiritual stuff. And right. you know, there's a great one, Outrageous Openness. Um, Who's the and, author? Oh, I'll tell you right now, because I've, I subscribe to all her stuff, but I'm just, because I have a bit of a cold, I feel like my brain is not. Tosha <laughs> Silver is the author, Tosha, T-O-S-H-A Silver. It's called the outrageous, outrageous openness, outrageous openness. And what a I great title here because it's just so good. It's so good. I'll, I'll dive into that. I only read nonfiction. I should probably expand my mind and do a fiction every now and then, but I like, I'm, I'm obsessed. Really I'm just obsessed with, and how you can better yourself. And I'm really, I'm really obsessed with like supernatural. I pretty much feel like I'm always living in the 5d anyway. I don't oh even God. feel what like I'm here reading? half the time. What are some of your favorite books? Well, I could show you my little shelf over here. Oh, um, but yeah, I, the, the power of one more is Ed Milet's book. He's such a great person. And I wanted to start reading his, but mm -hmm. I got Tony Robbins life force, which I'm going to dive into. I'm wrapping up the knowing by mm -hmm. 
uh, Sage Dyer and Serena Pisoni Dyer, Dyer Pisoni, I'm sorry, uh, the two daughters of Wayne Dyer. And okay. The Knowing is such a powerful book. Purchased this book. My dad was sick for quite some time, as you know. Yeah. I purchased this book, started reading it, and my dad passed. Same name. My dad's name was Wayne as well. It was so crazy. He passed, and I'm in the middle of reading this book. And then I'm on these next chapters of the girls, you know, talking about, you know, their connection with their dad. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. So I'm, I'm wrapping up that book right now, beautiful writing. And it's just, I felt so connected and how timely this book was. One more that I really loved. Have you read, um, the untethered soul? I think I'm the only one who has not finished that book. It's that's, so good. that's like bared entry. His, his newest one, I almost want to say is better, but I guess you should read the first one first. Mm -hmm. but they're short reads. They're not thick books. Mm -hmm. um, but his, the last one, um, I didn't, wasn't crazy about the one he wrote after that, but the last one he just wrote called Living Untethered was really wonderful. Okay. So, I'll get that. I recommend those two. I will do that for sure. And I know like Thinking Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, such a fast, oh, great book. I mean, there's these staple books, right? That that everyone needs to read, but that's week. another one. So I'll grab that too. It's so good. It's so good. I think you, it'll resonate with you. I think you'll like it a lot. It's reading season anyway. It's super yeah. chilly out now. Put a fire on and just cozy up with a blanket, a little, little cocoa and yes. uh, get to reading. Yeah. I'm ex I, there's so much I'm excited for you. Like there there's, I, I feel like really big things are coming like oh bigger God, than bigger. I, I do. You. I feel it. I love you so it's much. just so fun to see, you know, and see it happening to good people, you know, especially I when love, you see that, like it's, I love seeing that too. oh That's my gosh, I know coconut's probably so upset with me because I'm taking away mommy <laughs> time. I'm so sorry, coconut, but I will make it up to you. Thank you so Thank much. You so and much. So fun. of course I'll see you. I'm, I'm sure in the next week or two oh, on yeah. one of our calls, sure. but Oh yeah. And then also the collagen that we have been speaking Oh my about. gosh. How and did we miss two, this? Mark your calendar, 6 a.m. November 16th, November 15th, 6 a.m. PST. Everything will go live. November 15th, 6 a.m. PST yes. going live. Don't miss it. Links miss it. are in the description below. I will have it all dialed in. Mara, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Have a great day. For more on Mara Marini and how you can connect with her online and get social, you can visit her on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at Popgloss. And visit her on TikTok at Popgloss underscore. Thank you all so much for listening and watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please, please, by all means, give it a thumbs up and comment in the comment section below. Love to hear your feedback. And if you have any suggestions for another episode, love to hear about that too. You can always connect with me, Chrissy May on Instagram at the Chrissy May. I am also on Facebook at Chrissy May aligned and alive. And of course on YouTube, it's Chrissy May aligned. They just rolled out with those YouTube handles. So I grabbed mine. If you have a cool guest that you want to introduce me to love, love to feature somebody who is in the spirituality, health and wellness space, uh, has a passion for health and wellness, has a passion for manifesting and energy and vibrational frequency and creating your own reality. Those are the people I'd love to connect with. So hopefully you're always able to gain something insightful and inspiring from all of these episodes. So thank you so much and make it a beautiful day. Much love.